What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Four Number News! The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. And we don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it. Okay, people, and before we get started, I would like to remind you that I do have an album currently out right now. The Rise of Tim Roosevelt, out now on all streaming platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your music, you can get a copy. And of course, if you want to get a physical copy, definitely go on over to my Twitch, twitch.com slash Tim Roosevelt, and become a subscriber, and immediately, boom, you got a physical copy just like that. So, yeah, super appreciate it. And without further ado, let's jump into this episode of Forever News. Bound to rebound, steady asking what you about. All about the knowledge like a treetop Gotta do better than they did for us Make sure that the seeds got And first story on the docket Some really awesome stuff A little bit of a throwback of information That recently surfaced regarding the Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama And why Goku was aged up so quickly in OG Dragon Ball Dragon Ball may have been created by Akira Toriyama back in the day, but the series wouldn't be the one we know without Kazuhiko Torishima's help. The editor brought the series to life as Toriyama's editor at Shueisha, and he oversaw the first half of Dragon Ball after helping on Dr. Slump. These days, the manga legend is reliving his career in a new book, and an antidote from the novel reveals new information about Goku's aging. As shared by Herms98 on Twitter, Torishima's new book features a text chat between himself and Toriyama. During this section of the book, the two talk shop about manga, and Toriyama thinks back to an important moment in Dragon Ball. When the series began shifting from a more explorative shonen to a battle-centric one, the manga aged up Goku, and it turns out Toriyama had a specific reason for doing this. And what is it? Well, it has to do with battle choreography. Toriyama felt Goku's small body was too much of an obstacle while drawing action sequences, so he wanted to age up Goku. Torishima opposed this idea when it was first raised, but Tor Toriyama said it had to happen lest he quit the series entirely. Basically he said, yo, either uh, Goku ages up or I'm out of here. It was just how set Toriyama was on Goku being aged up and Torishima was left to pitch adult Goku to the editor-in-chief at Shueisha. As we all know today, the change was approved and Dragon Ball was hardly hit over Goku's aging. It seems a single complaint was lodged at Shueisha over the ordeal, so Toriyama's vision panned out. In order to create an action manga with dynamic battles, Goku needed to be an adult, so Toriyama made that change happen with the help of Torishima. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's a really, really interesting story nonetheless. The fact that even as, you know, the, the head guy in charge of Dragon Ball at that time. Mind you, at that point, Toriyama is not just like any mangaka that is with their first hit. He already had a massive hit with Dr. Slump. But nevertheless, it always goes to show for people that feel like, you know, everything that happens is 100% because of the manga author, the manga creator themselves. Oftentimes, there's a whole chain of command when big things have to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if when a character is you know propose to die from the series or something huge and changing is going to happen they probably have to pass it through the editors the editorial staff the editor-in-chief like there's a chain of command for big changes to happen to a manga which is probably why half the time a lot of changes don't really happen in ongoing series series stay for the most part like par for the course because yeah look if that editor and that you know editor-in-chief and all those people decided nah we really like goku as a kid you want to quit that's fine that would have been the end of dragon ball and goku would have never aged up it would have been like one more arc of little kid goku and yeah we don't see raditz we don't see vegeta we don't get a whole legacy and the changing of the shonen genre as a whole with dragon ball z's era so kind of crazy to think but nevertheless really awesome stuff to find out of yeah toriyama basically said i get my adult goku or i quit Moving forward, in case you don't know about what's going on in the world, Twitter has recently rebranded. It is no longer Twitter. I believe now it's just going by X, thanks to uh, Elon Musk, billionaire-centric. And apparently, Twitter's rebrand, at the very least in Japan, was halted, all thanks to one rock band. It's been a wild week for social media gurus, that's for sure. If you've kept up with Twitter and its ongoing drama, things got interesting this week as Elon Musk announced yet another change to the site. The site Twitter has formally rebranded itself as X, and rolled out a logo to match. Reception of the Twitter rebrand has been tumultuous at best, and over in Japan, one of the nation's biggest rock bands just halted the whole thing online. So first, let's give some context. If you did not know, Japan has a vibrant music scene, and its rock music is revered by fans across the world. J-Rock, as it is called in a global force, and one of its most enduring groups is X Japan. The band has been around for ages and features rock legends like Yoshiki. So when you think of X Japan, you think of rock music. 
the ridiculousness of entity formerly known as Twitter Japan now just using Japan for its name because they cannot legally change the name to X Japan since X Japan is trademarked by the prominent Japanese rock band of the same name. Of course, that is now proving to be an issue for Twitter, or X rather, after all, the site is going by X in the United States and has rolled out that change out to regions across the globe. There, there, each country that has a dedicated Twitter page has changed its name to X, but it cannot do that in Japan due to copyright reasons. Yes, that's right. X Japan is trademarked in Japan by the nation's biggest rock band. J-Rock would not be what we know it without X Japan. And since Twitter announces rebranding, members of X Japan have been vocal about the shift. Members of the ensemble have said they will push back against X Japan because of its use by Twitter now it will have changed its name so far the site has listened because as of now Twitter Japan is now just called Twitter and that's fascinating to say the least that you know this whole giant conglomerate of a plan you would think it would be thought through to the point to make sure like okay where is it trademarked at X you got to imagine that X is going to be extremely you know a popular used thing I mean we have Malcolm X back in the day for crying out loud so you got to imagine that this would be some major you know like rollout that would be very carefully crafted but in all honesty it looks like elon musk is probably way over his head in certain aspects and he's just making change after change to try and see what sticks which is interesting to say the least in front of you know the world's eyes because he purchased twitter for 44 billion dollars and it seems as though ever since he has things have not gone his way from the twitter blue you know debacle to the limiting tweets that you could only what, what was it 300 tweets if you're not a twitter blue like just a whole bunch of malarkey so yeah i mean i guess kudos to x japan for holding it down over there in japan but as it stands it looks like the x is taking over a lot of different places it's gonna be real strange I, in all honesty it looks like in my opinion elon musk should roll everything back to how it was and try and figure out a new strategy because all these strong arm tactics are gonna just push more and more people away threads is looking good right now a lot of people are like looking at other avenues to get away from this kind of nonsense that it feels like regarding all this stuff with elon musk but i'll keep you guys updated on twitter x japan or x japan or whatever the heck it's going by nowadays because they can't use the x japan moving forward apparently president barack obama makes his debut in the new netflix series anime Barack Hanma, Obama's anime debut. In the second season of Baki Hanma, Obama has a face-to-face -face meeting with Yujiro Hanma, as most US, U.S. presidents have to think of the best way to approach the strongest being on Earth. In the anime, Ozma is voiced in the English dub by voice actor Bill Butts. Surprisingly enough, the appearance of a real-life president is one of the tamer aspects of this wild fighting anime series. Yes, we can. I am beyond honored to announce that I am President Obama, Ozama, in Baki. Seriously, growing up as a black kid and seeing someone who looks looks like me become president was incredibly inspiring and yeah they got barack obama in the baki anime which a lot of people have been telling me to check out the baki anime again i've said this before but uh i am still on the old baki anime and aside from like youtube it's kind of a little challenging to find the baki anime the old one so until i finish the original baki anime no new baki for me although it looks really freaking hype and i'm like damn i wouldn't mind seeing it Moving forward, Netflix, every movie and TV show arriving in August 2023. A new month is set to begin next week, and that means a lot of new movies and TV shows are about to make their way to Netflix. On Wednesday, the streaming service revealed the full list of titles set to arrive on its roster over the course of August, and there's quite a lot for subscribers to look forward to. At the start of the month, Netflix is adding a horde of movies, including half of the films from the Fast and the Furious franchise. The first five Fast and Furious films are hitting the streaming service on August 1st, along with despicable me movies and several other titles as far as originals go the biggest title hitting netflix comes in the form of the streamers live action take on one piece the iconic manga and anime series the entire first season of one piece arrives on netflix on august 31st the gal gadot starring original movie heart of stone on august 11th and here's the full roster of things that we got coming uh so we got august 1st too fast too furious b movie cloudy with a chance of meatballs to coming to america now, that, that's kind of an interesting one to watch i wouldn't mind hopping back in uh despicable me despicable me to eat pray love fast and furious fast five the fast and the furious the fast and the furious tokyo drift i think that was like the last one i actually watched uh ferris bueller's day off friends with benefits it's complicated the jerk just go with it lost in translation madagascar 3 europe's most wanted no strings attached pawn stars season 14 palms terminator genesis 
Ugly Betty Seasons 1 through 4, and Untold Jake Paul, The Problem Child Netflix documentary. And I won't be watching that one. I'm going to give you real. We won't be watching that one, fam. <laughs> but yeah, if you're a Netflix subscriber, uh, there you go. You got a whole roster of things to watch coming in August. Moving forward, Jujutsu Kaisen fans. Y'all know Season 2 has been rocking the streets lately. And yeah, we got some stuff to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen because apparently the Jujutsu Kaisen director has broken his silence on a new Adult Swim anime, Ninja Kamui. Sung Hoo Park, the director behind anime hits such as Jujutsu Kaisen and the God of High School anime, opened up about working on his new anime for Adult Swim, Ninja Kamui. Adult Swim is now in the midst of working on a number of new original anime productions over the last few years, and fans got to see more of their plans for the next couple of years during the Adult Swim Festival on the Green over the San Diego Comic Con 2023 weekend. One of the interesting projects shown during the event was a bloody new ninja anime from Sung Hoo Park's brand new production studio. Sung Hoo Park's new production studio, E and A. H Productions has announced that their new Ninja Kamui anime for Adult Swim will be the first effort from the studio overall. With the first trailer for Ninja Kamui debuting during Adult Swim Festival on the Green, Sung Hoo Park also shared his first statements about the upcoming anime with Adult Swim fans as part of the footage released too. And apparently the Ninja Kamui anime is gearing up for release in 2024. Ninja Kamui follows Joe Hegan, who is a Nukenin, a former ninja who escaped his clan and is hiding from his violent past in rural America with his family. One night he is ambushed by a team of assassins from his former organization who exact a bloody retribution on Joe and his family for betraying their ancient code. Rising from his seeming death, Joe will reemerge as his former self, Ninja Kamui, to avenge his family and friends. Kamui is a 21st century ninja, a shadowy anachronism who pits his ancient skills against high-tech weaponry with brutal finesse he must face off against trained assassins combat cyborgs and rival ninjas to bring down the very clan that made him honestly that sounds like one hell of a anime to start off with sung hoo park and considering whatever you want to say about the god of high school the art and animation was fantastic there's nothing you can say about jujutsu kaisen other than it is freaking awesome so yeah this might be one to look out for and shout out to homie starting his own thing i think that's one one of the biggest things over the last few years for anybody that has a dream is start it off and do it yourself and all the other big stuff and the sponsors and everything will eventually come but if you got a goal a dream a passion whatever the case may be go for it and then ideally everything will come after the fact but you got to start and do it yourself and while we're on the topic of Jujutsu Kaisen stuff, Jujutsu Kaisen's creator reacts to the newest episode's animation. <clears throat> How Jujutsu Kaisen creator reacted to Season 2, Episode 3. Thanks for Season 2, Episode 3, Akutami began. I get the strong sense that this season has a lot of 3D direction and key animation. I think it has really become an indispensable skill in the animation industry. A great era for the anime. In smaller notes about the episode, Akutami hilariously revealed that he also has a thing for faces in acceleration smears, such as the one show case by Fushiguro at full speed. Akutami went even as far as commenting on Fushiguro's speed with Papaguro is so fast. <laughs> okay, Papaguro. Alrighty. Which is just kind of the newest episode, which this is not the newest episode at this point. Episode 4 dropped as I'm recording this bad boy. Reaching the climax of the hidden inventory arc and setting the stage for the premature death arc to come. Now is the time to catch up with season 2 of the anime and I gotta kind of do that. I'll be honest with you. I'm falling apart with it. Oh! I said falling apart. I meant falling behind. Well, maybe I'm <laughs> Might be doing a little bit of both. I'm just playing around, by the way. No, I'm not. Before the Shibuya incident arc kicks off in full with the biggest fights in the series to date, you can now find Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 streaming on Crunchyroll. Moving forward, Ice Cube teases NYC pop culture references and TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Ice Cube wanted some authentic underground New York flavor in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, and that includes quoting Ice T. Ice Cube, who appears in the upcoming animated movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, says it was his idea to quote Ice T in the movie. Ice T, who has been appearing in the Law & Order franchise since 1990, is a New York City icon, and that opened the door to the Turtles and company being pretty aware of him. The look and feel of mutant mayhem is as influenced by the look of new york as as any tmnt project ever even looking more new york in places than the live action movies actually shot partially in the city inspired by movies like spider-man into the spider-verse a new generation of ambitious animated movies like puss in boots the last wish and teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem have started to seep into the blockbuster space giving a cool tactical update to properties that have previously been fairly by the numbers in terms of their style even when the scripts themselves were strong i wanted to throw as many pop culture references as I could think of Cube told comicbook.com Chris Killian 
he's super fly. He's a king of New York. You've got to check in. You got to check him for the ops. If you're an op, you're going to have to deal with it. I wanted to make sure that all that got into the story about underground New York. We have fun with it. According to the film's official synopsis, in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, after years of being sheltered from the human world, the turtle world is set out to win the hearts of New Yorkers and be accepted as normal teenagers through heroic acts. Their new friend, April O'Neil, helps them take on a mysterious criminal syndicate, but they soon get in over their heads when an army of mutants is unleashed upon them. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem stars Micah Abbey as Donatello, Shaman Brown Jr. as Michelangelo, Nicholas Cantu as Leonardo, and Brady Noon as Raphael. The cast also includes Hannibal Burris as Jenis Frog, shout out to Hannibal Burris, he was freaking hilarious in uh, Eric Andre Show. Ross Bryan as Leatherhead, John Cena as Rocksteady, Jackie Chan as Splinter, this is a freaking hilarious all-star team. Ice Cube as Superfly, shout outs to Ice Cube. Natasia Demetrio as Wingnut, Ayo Edebiri as April O'Neil, Gian. Carlo Esposito as Baxter Stockman, Post Malone as Ray Filet, Seth Rogen as Bebop, Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko, and Maya Rudolph as Cynthia Ultram. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem opens in theaters on August 4th. All right, it sounds like one hell of a budget for these actors, quote unquote. Act oh my God, probably because of the actor strike. That's why they got so many non-actors like Post Malone and, well, Ice Cube is an actor, so let me not even go there. But yeah, interesting and really, I, I don't know, I'm kind of excited for this cast. Moving forward, One Piece fans, we got quite a bit of One Piece stuff to talk about, some of which that I already talked about on my other show that I do, the Forever World show that you could either catch it on twitch.com slash Tim Roosevelt or on my Forever World channel. The video on demand usually will be dropping on Monday. So I talked about a lot of One Piece stuff, but some of this stuff I didn't. So let's get into it. Because for starters, thanks to Sandman AP over on Twitter, we got a little quote from Oda that apparently in 2022 he said, I really want to joke around more in the final saga, even if it becomes comes a manga that people say your idea is boring it can still be an entertainment for me it'd be interesting if the topic of conversation was one piece is in big trouble i'm going to enjoy it so essentially he was looking forward to people saying yo one piece fell off fam i don't know man one piece is going like he actually wanted to lower the or i don't know would that be lowering the bar or making the bar even higher because that well no it'd be lower in the bar hmm interesting oda kind of wanted some backlash i guess maybe he's kind of tired of like all oh, these one piece fans Fans keep dick riding. Stop dick riding already. That's pretty much what Oda was saying, not me. So, yo, re re relax, don't hurt me. But that's kind of hilarious that he wanted to kind of go in a super humorous way because I bet anything that he to this day is still upset that people don't really rock with the Foxy stuff because people were like, it's too comedic, it's too funny. So, if he went in that route for the final saga, fans would probably go in that direction. And it's amazing that Oda was like, yes, please show me some backlash. Stop licking my nuts. Oda, gotta love him. And while we're on the topic of One Piece, live action One Piece series, new trailer previews, Arlong Roger, more characters. Again, if you want to see my reaction, go over to my Forever World channel or just Forever. I talk about it on one of my latest episodes of the Forever World show. The One Piece Day 2023 live stream event on Saturday revealed a new trailer for the Hollywood live action series of Eiichiro Oda's One Piece manga. And I also wanted to address this really quick because for people that may have missed it, again, I spoke about it on a couple of different platforms of what was was happening and why I was talking the way I was last week's episode of Forever News regarding the One Piece live action and my kind of decision of wanting to pretty much boycott the situation i go way more in depth into the situation over on my Forever world show so again i highly encourage you just if you want the full scoop of what happened why i feel this way you could go check it out but in a nutshell um i was i had somewhat of a casual I guess relationship of talking once in a blue moon to one of the people from the crew of the One Piece live action. I had reacted to the very first trailer that came out, not the latest one, the first trailer. And for the most part, I was like, mm, "There's some issues here," but I, I'm I want to you know reserve my judgment until we see more. I wasn't really like bashing it. I wasn't really like gung ho about it. I was like, "This looks good. This looks good. This looks bad. This looks bad." Basically, a balanced kind of reaction for the most part. However, uh, one of these people on the One Piece live action team basically was very unhappy about that and sent me a 
kind of very nasty messages, I guess you would say, over on Instagram. I'll put their name blurred out because I don't want to start any drama. However, if the person decides that they want to speak out, then, you know, we can go from there. But yeah, um, they basically came at me on some venomous stuff and it made me feel like, oh, wow. So I was supposed to lie about my feelings again on that first trailer. The second trailer was a bit better than the first one, a lot better than the first one. And so it kind of made me feel like I didn't really want to talk about it. But after uh, sharing what happened with a lot of people, including again on my Fnatic World show and on my Twitch channel, a lot of people said, screw that guy and if you feel like watching it you want to give it a shot you should um so that's kind of where i'm at with it right now i may check it out it's just a matter of if i will I i'm not really sure but uh yeah that's why i was kind of more so firm on not wanting to check it out because it was just kind of like i didn't appreciate getting disrespected over having an honest reaction to that first trailer but again yeah, I just wanted to give you guys because I felt like it was only fair if I was very firm about that. And a lot of people were questioning, like, why is, you know, uh, Fnev so firm on not wanting to watch the One Piece live action? That's a brief summary of it. I go more in depth on my Fnev World uh, show. So go check it out if you would like to hear more about it. But with that being said, we do got word from Eichiro Oda, creator of One Piece, on the live action. Some things that he said. So uh, here's his statement. So the live action One Piece. The teaser and trailer are now out and the launch date for the show itself is set for August 31st. I'll say this. There were no compromises on this show and the festivities have already begun. It's already fun seeing the flurry of reactions after each release of information. And the very fact that adapting One Piece into live action was conceived seven years ago is wild. How will this world be brought to life? There was so much more that went into it. All the efforts by the actors actors, the building of the world, and the costumes, presenting things in a way that can only be done in live action, the dialogue, and, and the entire process of so many people putting their heads together was a festivity in and of itself. After the launch, I'm sure I'll hear about some people pointing out how this character is missing, or that scene is omitted, and this bit is different from the manga, but I'm sure they'll come from a place of love, so I intend to enjoy even those comments, lol. The story will span eight episodes and take us up through you know where. No, we, we. We, we don't know where Oda. So honestly, over this comment alone, um, and there's a little bit more actually. Even after the shoot was over, there were numerous scenes the production agreed to reshoot because I felt they weren't good enough. So that report that I put out that a lot of people said, oh, no, there wasn't no reshoots. There was reshoots. I was right. My uh, reporting was very accurate. I felt they weren't good enough to put out into the world. On the other hand, there were also some lines that I thought didn't feel like Luffy on paper. But when I saw the film scenes, I went, it works when it, Inaki is performing it as Luffy. As a matter of fact, it works great. Inaki is the actor who plays Luffy. There were so many things that had to be done to keep things from looking too unnatural in live action. The producers and the crew are pros at live action. And frankly, they're One Piece super fans too. The more knowledgeable you are about One Piece, the more you're likely to notice the love they poured into this. It was June when we made the final decision to go ahead and launch the show. My editor, who worked so hard on this actually cried as he said it was such a long journey lol not the working hard on something guarantees success of course but now i just love this production team and the cast so much that i can't wait for them to get the claim they deserve from everyone around the world and if by chance people have some gripes i'll be there to receive them together now whatever feelings you choose to harbor in the meantime it's still going to be one month so please have some tea as you wait so a couple of things to note from this thing is for starters that there are going to be some characters missing according to oda there's going to be some scenes that are going to be omitted basically not in the series according to Oda there were some reshoots like I said as I reported that there was some stuff that Oda was just like no I don't like this which if anything that's a good thing I don't know why people got so offended like no there was reshoots <laughs> Oda said he didn't like it do it again which is great let's follow Oda's vision uh, but I was right on that account as well and for the most part it looks like Oda is pretty gung-ho about it and likes it so we'll see what happens but again uh, for people that was curious on the whole situation I hope I somewhat addressed what happened and why I felt that way but yeah let me know what you think about this whole situation in general i don't like to bring drama and all that stuff to this this is for never news you come here to have a good time you know what i'm saying get your day going um but that's what it is and we do have more one piece related stuff to talk about one piece anime gets ending theme again after 17 years the one piece day 2023 live event stream on saturday revealed that the one piece anime will be getting an ending theme song for the first time in 17 years the anime has in that time instead had an extra long opening theme song the three member group chili beans will perform the new ending theme song raise the new ending theme will debut august 6th and the live stream event previewed a section of the song additionally the event revealed that sekai no owari will perform the anime's new opening theme song the group stated in a video that the new song is coming along but it is not finished 
yet. Earlier in the day, the live stream also previewed a video featuring Luffy's new Gear 5th form. The episode previewed the new form, which will air on August 6th. So yes, that is another massive thing that there is a preview trailer that, again, over on my Forever World show, if you're interested, I reacted to it, uh, of Luffy going Gear 5th. And I'm not even going to lie, it looks incredible. This is going to be one for the books. In terms of comparing it to all of Luffy's other gears, this is by far the best transformation. It surpasses all of them. And probably if I was to have to put them like in order, it'd be like Gear 5th, maybe Gear 2nd or 4th because they're both iconic, and then probably Gear 3rd at the bottom. But Gear 5th is on a whole other level. And this trailer showcases yet again just absolute epicness that I can't wait to see for uh, Luffy going Gear 5th in this upcoming uh, August 6th episode. It's going to be massive. It's going to be hype. And yeah, One Piece fans is eating immensely this summer. So think about it. It was kind of like a gift and a, and a trade, so to speak. You lost a month of Oda, you know, writing the manga, but in exchange, you're about to get Gear 5th in the anime. You're getting a live action that Oda believes in very heavily and a whole bunch of other stuff, new theme song, and One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 game character pass 2 launches September 2023. Bandai Namco Entertainment revealed on Monday that the second character pass for its One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 game will launch September 2023. The character pass 2 will include the game's character pack 4, character pack 5, and character pack 6 comprising a total of nine playable DLC characters. Character Pack 4 will include Onigashima Battle Luffy, Bandai Namco Entertainment Southeast Asia streamed a video for the new character pass. The game's Character Pack 1 DLC launched in July 2020 with three characters, Charlotte Smoothie, Charlotte Cracker, and Vince Smoke Judge. The game's Character Pack 2 included X Drake, Killer, and Uroge and launched in September 2020. Its Character Pack 3 launched December 2020 with DLC character Kozuki Odin as well as with DLC characters Kim Kinemon and Okiku, the game debut for PS4, blah blah blah. And I'm wondering if there's going to be Gear 5th in this DLC or if they have that incoming in general because yeah, who who wouldn't want to play as Gear 5th Luffy? But yeah, so even One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 is getting some updates with DLC and just in general, it's a good time to be a One Piece fan. Yeah. Moving forward, I have a pretty interesting interview that I found uh, from Tatsuki Fujimoto. And it's his latest interview talking about Ghibli. So it's very, very interesting to note because you never expect the two to be even in the same breath of conversation. But yeah, according to this, it says here... Got the chance to check out Tatsuki Fujimoto's latest interview about Ghibli. In it, he talks about his views not just on Ghibli and Hao Miyazaki, but also on the state of anime manga, including some personal plans for the future. And here's some notes. First Ghibli movie he watched in theaters and most rewatched today is Spirited Away. That's a classic. His favorite Ghibli character is Ashitaka from Princess Mononoke. He differentiates manga from other formats. Ashitaka's famous arrow scenes wouldn't work as well. They'd only take small panels. Fuji thinks people like Miyazaki who travel for research will be no more in the future, which I could see that a lot of people are like, I could get all the inspiration online. Uh, I don't need to go, which that's so inaccurate. Like being able to actually see things will give you inspiration you could never get from just sitting at home. I'm just saying. It's also why he believes Shinkai continues to make films based in Japan. It's what he's best at. Wants to shade and detail more in Chainsaw Man, but it's actually hard to do that for a weekly series. While he enjoys films in a way where he can pick out Miyazaki's style, he also likes watching without thinking too critically. This is easier for Ghibli films than, say, American Sniper, where social issues of the era are important. Everything you should know is already in the film. He admires Miyazaki's ability to balance business and artistry in his works. Mia's paneling composition is top tier, like for his manga, Nasuka of the Valley of the Wind. Agree with Oda's One Piece statement of how Mia's Ghibli storyboards are similar to that of mangaka. He was able to work on Look Back leisurely because of Chainsaw Man's success and pay his assistance for that longer period too that's really really dope newcomer mangaka can't do this financially impossible so essentially it was only because chainsaw man was popping that he was able to just kick back and write these one shots and pay his assistance and chill out and shit like kudos to that success Fujimoto wants to be like Asa Akasaka, Kaguya-sama, Oshinoko, and only write stories in the future. To him, while there is fun in writing just stories, there's not as much fun in only drawing for the sake of art. He believes Miyazaki can make stories with themes that can resolve issues in a more organic slash realistic manner, along the lines of entrusting your ideals or making a wish. I won't forget what happened here once upon a time. Experiences like the way you walk, riding a bike. Miyazaki's films have that level of awareness from Fuji's point of view, along with a strong sense of authorship. Basically, Fujimoto really loves Spirited Away. 
and then here's some more. Nasuko, the Valley of the Wind is a film based on the manga serialized by director Miyazaki himself. Fujimoto says, Manga can be controlled by one person, so it's easy to express the creator's personality than through live action or animation. But the Nasuka manga can be enjoyed the same way. I truly think Miyazaki is top tier as a mangaka. Its composition is incredible. The paneling is easy to follow, and the storytelling is also pretty good. Plus, the outlines are amazing. I myself would like to outline and shade more in my own manga, but I can't do that much work with the weekly serialization. I'm envious of the outlines drawn in the Nasuka manga, which can only be done at a pace equivalent to or slower than a monthly serialization. For example, director Miyazaki knows a lot about other countries, so he, so he can create fantasy works based on one specific or several countries. However, for otakus who are in their 30s slash 40s like us, if you ask them to draw a fantasy, then it end up like the world setting from a Final Fantasy game. Like how the so-called Isekai Otherworld Reincarnation Worlds are based on RPG games. From an academic perspective, I think people who can create works like director Miyazaki will be no more later on. Of course, one who creates works based on their own gathered research, but I have a feeling that people who spend money to specifically travel abroad for research will be no more. How Will You Live is a work which has caused director Miyazaki to withdraw from retirement several times, but do you, Fujimoto, truly believe there is such retirement for creators? Hmm, I'm not sure about that, but Oshino co-writer Aka Akasaka himself did declare, I won't draw this, I thought... Must be so nice. I want to do that too. <laughs> I like how I felt the resolve with screams. Let's make a new work from that. I'd be happy if you could start drawing it for me too. Does Fujimoto-san have any thoughts like I want to focus on writing stories? Yes, that would definitely be more fun. On the other hand, what about only drawing in the same manner? I have not. Of course, it's fun to balance out the story and the art and there is certainly a level of enjoyment to just stories. But as far as art goes, in my case, I think I can only deliver a narrow-minded impression to the audience. And yeah, people, that was a pretty interesting look of I never in a billion years thought I would hear Tatsuki Fujimoto, one of the most raunchy and wild mangaka out there, talking about something as wholesome as like Miyazaki works and uh, Studio Ghibli stuff. But hey, why not? Moving forward, we will keep this in the rumor pile because it is a little bit uh, hard to believe, but... A leak came out allegedly that according to a Danish website, Storm Connections will be releasing October 20th, 2023. But if I'm not mistaken, isn't that like on the same time as the upcoming Spider-Man 2 game comes out? And I think there's like another big title that's coming out around that time. So personally, while that would be humongous, that would be amazing. Like, yes, I, I personally think that Storm should come out at some point in October. For it to be October 20th, I'm hoping that that's more so like a placeholder, even though usually they use like December 31st as a placeholder for everything. But I'm hoping October 20th is more so a placeholder or more so a guesstimation than the actual date. Because in all honesty, aside from hardcores like myself, that I'm definitely going out to get Storm Connections Whenever it drops, a lot of people are going to be like, yo, that's cool. That's dope. I get it. I want Spider-Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And who knows? Maybe this is something that they'll be using as an excuse. Like, ah, oh, it didn't sell too well because Spider-Man came out at the same time. Even though you literally don't have to. Like, you could drop the game next week if it's ready. Just drop it. Like, why do you need to drop it in October? Drop it in November. <laughs> you know what I mean? Drop it in December. Why do you need to drop it in October? Especially October 20th. Assuming that this is actually legit. Uh, we, we will keep you posted on this one. Because if it is, Naruto fans, if you want more Storm games or whatnot definitely you're gonna have to show up and fight out as much as you can of the people that are gonna be like yeah i think i'm good i'm going with spider-man dog like spider-man is gonna be a new experience storm connections there's a lot of new stuff to it but it's also like four other games that i played a bajillion times i think i'm good so we'll see what happens but yeah if this leak is true we've got storm connections incoming october 20th let's go Moving forward, just a little update on something interesting. There's a new ice hockey sports manga series called Dogs Red with a debut color by Golden Kamui creator Satoru Noda in the upcoming weekly Young Jump issue 35 2023. So it looks like the author of Golden Kamui after ending, I think Golden Kamui ended like what, one or two years ago now? It's been a little bit since Golden Kamui ended. Homie is already off to creating a new work, again, an ice hockey sports manga series and I ain't gonna lie, that's something that hasn't really been explored all that much in manga. So if he can make this pop, it's definitely a massive transition from something like Golden Kamui to ice hockey. But maybe he can make something dope. You never know. This could be the next big Haikyuu-esque type of series. Or if all else fails, it could be something really dope and brutal. Because, yeah, Golden Kamui was pretty dope and brutal. So maybe he'll bring some of that vibe and ice hockey can get 
pretty dope and brutal. <laughs> Moving forward, something very interesting. Now, in case you don't know about Dark Horse Comics, while they are definitely more so, I guess, for most people, known for, like, putting out, like, American comics and stuff like that, for me personally and a lot of manga fans, we know them for being the people that bring Berserk to North America. But something that is massively fascinating to know is that it's important to remember that manga was made for Japanese readers. However, at Dark Horse Comics, manga is 1% of their output, meaning only out of all the books they got, if there's 100 books that they put out, literally only one of those books that they put out is manga. But it represents 66% of their sales. So literally out of 100 books, one book sells for 66% of the sales that they get overall and i'm going to put my money on i'm going to put it all on that one book is berserk i'm i'm i'm, I'm pretty freaking sure that berserk is the one that is carrying dark horse comics especially of course after the unfortunate and untimely passing of the late great kentaro miura when kentaro miura passed two years ago now those sales for Berserk, you couldn't f find Berserk anywhere. They had to reprint it a gajillion times, whether it be the big, you know, editions that they had of it, whether it be the singular volumes, like those things went like hotcakes because everybody started screaming his praise and trending all over the place. So I'm imagining that contributed to it. But nonetheless, it's crazy that Dark Horse Comics with all the comics that they have. I mean, even when I was younger, my pops used to buy me. I used to have some dark horse comics that i've seen before i'm like hey how the hell i got a dark horse comic C comic i don't even know what the hell this is but outside of all of the comics that they have the only one that really be moving the needle so to speak for their sales is the manga and i'm willing to bet again that most of that is berserk so it goes to show that yeah you get one that's all it takes just you need one big one one successful one yes so to speak to make it all work just take that as a little lesson that, you know, whatever you're doing, you just need one thing to make it happen and it could support you and go a long way. 66% out of 1% of their inventory. That is insane. Shout outs to Berserk because, again, I'm like 100% sure that that's Berserk. Moving forward, small updates here. For starters, we got Dr. Stone New World TV anime will be publishing its latest information next week in Weekly Shonen Jump issue number 36 slash 37. So Dr. Stone's TV anime, the next season, we'll finally hear more about it, even though I'll be honest, I haven't been that up on it as of recent. And yeah, that also confirms that next week's issue is going to be a double issue. So that means that we have an issue this week and more than likely the following we won't. Moving forward, a little extra piece of One Piece stuff. Apparently, a poster in last week's issue of Weekly Shonen Jump had a image of the cast of the upcoming One Piece live action, the Straw Hats, and a couple of different things, which is a really random poster to have of them just like kicking it and chilling. And I'm imagining that the reason they do that, because there's always a reasoning behind it, is just to showcase like, hey, these are the cool guys that you love. Think like back in the days with Power Rangers, how they like to personalize them make them more personable to you you feel like oh i know these guys i love these guys so them having them just casually hanging out on like a stairwell and casually eating is just to make you feel more like oh i love these dudes i want to see them win which is incredibly genius marketing to make sure that the one piece live action is a success like they are pulling out all the stops from having it on the cover of jump to having these casual very subliminal marketing tactics of hey those you know it's the cast of one piece you know them you love them you're gonna watch that right you're gonna support them like they're going all out for it and i mean it's smart you know what i'm saying shout outs to the the people that come up with those decisions to put it on the cover of jump moving forward just an update that uh yeah i covered again on my other show the Fenebel world show starring tim roosevelt that you could check out either on twitch.com slash tim roosevelt or on my other youtube channel for Neville world uh and pretty much i spent kind of reacted to the image but i didn't realize that there was actually a video trailer with pieces of animation for the upcoming naruto original episodes these are four episodes starting september 3rd that we're going to be having that is going back in time to naruto when he was a kid and kind of stories from that era it says here naruto tv anime new animation pv series special will go live for a total of four consecutive episodes and start broadcasting september 3rd and in this one i will say i'm a little bit skeptical because while while it's not confirmed what the contents of these four episodes are going to be based on this trailer 
it looks like they're first of all using scenes from that 20th anniversary animation that they did remember like a while back they showed like 10 minutes of like reanimated scenes from naruto but it was showcasing in this trailer at the very least a bunch of stuff that you know from like episode one of naruto episode two like all all of the stuff of naruto becoming a shinobi and whatnot and i'm just curious like are we gonna go down that road of just like hey here's a few stuff that you remember from the previous you know the back in the days is it just going to be a nostalgia fest of stuff we've already seen like i'm cool with nostalgia if it's like hey here's some cool episodes some stories you've never seen but if it's just going to be recaps of stuff that i've seen a bunch of different times like i could right now go and rewatch naruto you know what i mean i don't need four episodes to remind me if you're gonna redo the anime with updated animation for like 70 to 100 episodes by all means then i'm on board but if it's four episodes that are just gonna recapture or you know readapt like hey hey, trying to get the bells from kakashi and this and that and it's not really needed so i'm curious if this animated trailer that they showcase here is a testament to what we're going to get or it's just in general a little teaser of like hey naruto's coming back wait till you see what we got in store for you i guess we gotta wait and see but i'm a little bit skeptical after seeing the actual animated trailer of like what are they doing <laughs> i want you know news stories even if it's quote-unquote filler I'm, I'm fine with that like give me some cool little stories and maybe you could tie it in in some way kind of how like that one shot of minato with the rasengan like do something like that but with the anime we'll see who knows maybe one of those episodes will be the minato special readapted into an anime or something that'd be incredible Moving forward, the Seven Deadly Sins Grudge of Edinburgh Part 2 anime trailer reveals the theme song and the August 8th Netflix debut. Netflix began streaming an English subtitled trailer on Friday for the second part of the Seven Deadly Sins Grudge of Edinburgh, the Natsu no Taizai Enza no Edinburgh, the all-new two-part anime film project for Nakama Suzuki's The Seven Deadly Sins manga. The trailer reveals and previews the film's theme song, Odd, by Sawa no Hiroyuki, which is an incredible composer, mind you, and also reveals the film's August 8th worldwide debut on Netflix. We also got this image of two of the main characters, and boy, oh boy, I wish this was a 2D movie. <laughs> like, I'm still gonna probably give it a shot since it's only, like, the last one was, like, about 40, 50 minutes, so this one will probably be about 50 minutes as well. But man, oh man, I wish it was in 2D animation because based on the trailer that they showed so far, it's like, eh. like cool image right here. Why can't it look like that? You know what I'm saying? Especially if it was a movie. I think it all stems from that first Seven Deadly Sins movie flopping. Ever since that first Seven Deadly Sins movie flopped, it's never been the same, dog. Every season got progressively worse. And then we got here where it's like, I'm still gonna watch, but gosh darn it, why? Moving forward, quick update in the gaming realm. Resident Evil 4's remake game has crossed 5 million units in sales. Capcom announced on Thursday that the remake of its Resident Evil 4 game has sold more than 5 million units worldwide. The game released for the PS5, Xbox Series XS, and PC March 24th and sold over 4 million copies worldwide by April 7th. The game has a reimagined storyline and a new graphical art style based on the company's proprietary RE engine. Capcom announced a free VR virtual reality mode for the game that will be compatible with the PlayStation VR 2 device for the PS5 and yeah I got a lot Resident Evil 4 was awesome I wasn't really that gung-ho about like a remake per se for it I didn't feel like it was that much in order but if it's a good game it's a good game and for it to sell 5 million copies I'm sure a bit of that is off the name alone Resident Evil 4 remake whoa but also probably it's a good game let me know if it's a good game Moving forward, something that I'm really, really excited to talk about because I love, out of all the isekai in the world, there's one isekai that, this isekai is really freaking good, ReZero, because apparently ReZero's anime's third season has revealed a second teaser visual. The MF Bunko J Summer School Festival livestream event on Sunday revealed a new teaser visual for the third season of the ReZero Starting Life in Another World anime, and I'm not even gonna lie, this teaser visual looks even better than the anime be looking some job i'm just saying well the reason anime looks great let me not even try and cap whatever but i am through the roof excited for this reZero first season classic second season pretty much a classic for me and i hope uh season three is just on that 
same line because if you keep on making it hit after hit you got me sold because i love re-zero it's phenomenal amazing moving forward just a little update for that naruto og section flow performs opening and ending theme songs for the four naruto episodes that are incoming in september the official website for the naruto anime franchise announced on sunday that flow will perform the opening and ending theme for the four brand new episodes for the anime the opening theme will be a 20 year anniversary version of the band song go and the ending theme will be a cover of orange ranges song viva rock and flow is always a good choice to go musically so i'm not mad at that at all Moving forward, more Eichiro Oda news in this episode. Apparently, Eichiro Oda's Monsters one-shot manga is getting an anime. The One Piece Day 2023 event, which gave us so much, on Saturday revealed that Eichiro Oda's Monsters Ipaku Sanjo Hiru Jigoku one-shot manga will get an anime adaptation. And the poster that they got straight up looks like a Godzilla, like a kaiju or something there. The one-shot was featured in Oda's Wanted, which is a collection of manga one-shots. Shueisha published Wanted in Japan in 1998. Shueisha first published the one shot in 1994 in Weekly Shonen Jump. The manga features the character Ryuma, who later appears in Oda's One Piece manga. Jujutsu Kaisen and Jujutsu Kaisen Zero director Sung Hoo Park is directing the anime and is also in charge of the composition. Park's new studio E&H Production is animating the work, and the anime will be the length of one episode. So he's doing like a 20-minute episode for it, but I ain't mad at it. I'm very excited, and I'm wondering, is it going to be canonical to the One Piece anime? Or, you know, because remember, this isn't by Toei. If this is being done by Sung Hoo Park's new studio, I'm definitely watching regardless. I mean, it's Oda. He don't do anything outside of One Piece. So if one of his works from back in the day is getting animated, I'm tuning in. Okay, people, let's tone it down for the weekly Shonen Jump author comments. We got Eichiro Oda's One Piece. I was so excited to eat a giant pizza at Spontini. It was so soft and crunchy. Hope they open more stores. We got Koji Miura Blue Box. I tend to get an upset stomach if I eat raw egg whites i love omuris and oyakodon okay all right i'm not familiar with omur omur rice and oyakodon but i've eaten egg whites before and sometimes it messes up my stomach uh we got yuji iwasaki cypher academy i went all out this week's color page and added in a ton of stuff that wasn't planned awesome stuff sakamoto days yuto suzuki veggies taste better than they used to and it's so hot lately that i don't even want to eat ramen <laughs> i hear you fam hottest month in like ever witch watch kento shinohara on nobuyuki sakumo's radio show he talked about my manga and a video game i was on the development team for years ago you got a fan homie martial master asumi kawada koike san who was my first editor is back at shonen jump i better show off all my improvements awesome stuff me and roboko shuhei miyazaki i want to go to como terrace at omote sando i'd like to go to a shogi dojo as well kill blues tadatoshi fujimaki i don't like to say when you get older but my tear ducts are messed up lately i cry non stop i hear you homie sad times ice head gills ikuo hachia my eyes are sensitive to light and i need it to be completely dark to sleep if i sleep during the day there's like a 90 percent chance that i'll suffer from sleep paralysis interesting Black Clover's Yuki Tabata, I may be biased with love, but my four-year-old daughter is such a great artist. I'm so blessed to get to see her improve each day. I hear you, fam. Whenever my daughter draws something, I'll be like, yo, this is the greatest work ever invented. Toriyama, Kishimoto, Oda, move aside. <laughs> I hear you, Tabata. We got Mission Yozakura family's Hitsuji Gondaira. I get a throat cold every year around this time. Is it a summer cold or am I just worn out from the heat? My throat hurts. Under luck, Yoshifumi Tezuka. I'm late, but the witch from Mercury was so good. My favorite character is Mama Prospero. Akanebanashi's Takamasa Moe. It is so outrageously hot lately. I love the zoo and I'm worried about all the animals who are outside. Yo, Haikia, I wouldn't mind taking my kids to the zoo. Maybe I'll do that soon. My Hero Academia's Kohei Horikoshi. I'm drawing each scene while listening to music that would match it. I feel like music is always helping me. I love music with whatever i'm doing man shout out to koya hodokoshi i hope dude is doing better new age exorcist kota kawaii i'm continuously failing my mission to eat less sugar to combat sleepiness the elusive samurais you say matsui lately i get bored of a game before they release additional content maybe i should wait a year before buying a game maybe these games should stop piecing these contents together and just sell you the game complete no yeah huh? tenmaku cinema shun sayaki i love stuff made from titanium aside from the fact that you can't put it in a microwave it's the perfect material the ichinosi family's deadly sins by Tizen five it's hot in the night these days please enjoy chapter 34 haha -ha. he missed out on last weeks and he's 
back. A Fabric and 100, Daisuke and Oshima, the restaurant, Gugujo, has great meat and the employees are so interesting to talk to. My editor joins in like it's a competition. That sounds like a fun time. Do retries June Kirarazaka. I don't leave the AC on while I sleep. I use freezer packs instead. I dream about the North Pole a lot. Is it hot in you? Sounds like it's hot as hell in his studio, dog. Put that AC on. Stop playing. <laughs> but yeah, people, that was the weekly Shonen Jump author comments. Let's move on to the top 50 best-selling manga of the we yeah we got 50 through 41 let's see here boom 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 we got at 48 jujutsu kaisen volume 21 all the way from what is that is that i'm trying to look at the dates right here is that december or feb old ass volume doing 11.1 you know the anime is bringing in these sales almost 1.6 and not an old ass volume but you get what i mean that volume came out a little minute ago let's see here boom 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 where we going where we going with it we got oh why do you know sarah volume 30 and 13 days 52.3 with 12.8 k this might have been going for a hot minute and lost a lot of traction so the fact that it's still doing in a couple of weeks 50 k that's not bad at all like there's a lot of manga that you know wish it could be doing those numbers so shout outs to wadi no seraph man i loved that first i think the first two right there was two seasons of it i know i love for sure the first season and i liked a lot of the second season as well uh we got places 40 to 31 oshino ko volume 3 608 in total with 13.9 my hero academia volume 38 a 14.1 with 606k total so far i feel like that's a lot slower than a lot of other my hero volumes interesting oshino ko volumes 2 and 4 with 15.1 and 0.3 each bringing their totals to 661 and 624 uh, let's see here what the hell is isekai nambiri noka in 10 days 56k cool beans uh oshinoko volume 10 15.7k bring his total 409 uh oshinoko volume 9 15.8 bring his total 433k we got places 30 through 21 oshinoko again occupying places 30 through 28 volume 8 11 7 with 16.1 16.7 16.7 East Marshall still on the charts in 13 days with 71k total bring in 16.8 this week kudos to Marshall I think I got what like one more volume left to come out but you know it's already done uh Oshinoko volume 6 at 26 16 my god Oshinoko it don't stop people love this shit uh Oshinoko volume 5 at 24 with 17.4 bring in total 589 Oshinoko volume 1 so yo the first volume of Oshino Code just sold another 18k practically this week bringing sort of 738k golly Jujutsu Kaisen volume 22 I think that's the latest is that or the second to latest I'm, I'm not sure no no the second to latest with 18.6k bringing his total to 1.4 let's go we got 20 through 11 we're getting there we're getting there we're getting there we got Kimetsu Gakuen volume 4 in 13 days 87.7 for a gag series dog Demon Slayer practically shits out money it's crazy <laughs> we got blue exorcist volume 29 in 13 days 117.7 k kudos to blue exorcist doing 25.4 this week not bad not bad not bad and we got top 10 top 10 top 10 top 10 top 10 very fascinating to say the least hajime no ipo volume 138 is that the cover of it i feel like that's a stock cover what the hell because having ipo on the cover is he boxing again oh snap but in four days 25.7k for volume 138 my god that's insane we got blue lock volume 25 is a limited edition in three days did 31.2k uh let's see here we got uruma kun volume 33 in 11 days did 38.8k or 38.8k this week and in 11 days 117k total not bad for iruma kun blue lock volume 25 in three days 100.7k let's freaking go and then at the top two baby battle it out for the second consecutive week are Jujutsu Kaisen volume 23 and One Piece volume 106 with Jujutsu Kaisen this week doing 183 bringing his total to 898 and One Piece in 13 days doing 1.3 we're bringing in 215 man Jujutsu Kaisen on that second week usually starts catching up and then I think on the third week it'll probably if not the third week for sure on the fourth week it'll start outselling One Piece it's always that first week though that One Piece just bodies it because One Piece has like half a million 
Asian OG fans that are like, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're supporting this bad boy, okay? Uh, but yeah, shout outs to both these series holding it down and the immense success that they both see. That's all I have for this one, though. I'm Fanel World, and as always, people, have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule anime and manga for life, boy. Have an awesome day, peace, and you guys just watched another episode of. Boy, never knew. Don't forget to check out my album, The Rise of Tim Roosevelt, out on all streaming platforms right now. Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, songs like Day Ones, Mistakes, Stand and Fights. Like, oh my God, there's just so many awesome records on here. And like, yeah, check it out. I'd super appreciate it. And for everybody that has already checked it out, thank you so much. We go. Oh, and subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't already to get more of that for never news. This is for my day one. Oh, my day one. This is for my day one. Oh, my day one. I would like to thank each and every person that has taken time to listen and provide feedback for my new album that is out right now, The Rise of Tim Roosevelt. You can listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, pretty much anywhere you get your music, you can listen to it. Link in the description below so you could go check it out for yourself. Thank you so much and let's keep on rocking out, you know?